Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So this is my beginner's guide for the DJI Avada 2. This is DJI's newest version of the very popular Avada. And in this beginner's guide, we're going to go over everything you need to know as a new pilot to make sure you have a safe and successful first flight. This beginner's guide is designed for those who have never flown a drone before. We're going to go over everything in great detail. If you already have experience flying drones and perhaps you're just here looking for some updated information on the Avada 2, I will include chapter marks down in the description of this video and that way you can jump around to just the information you need. Flying a drone for the very first time can give you some anxiety, so hopefully by the time you're done watching this video you're going to feel a little bit more confident about taking your first flight. There's a lot of safety features built into these drones from DJI, a lot of fail safes to make sure that everything goes smoothly. So to start off here let's go over the new hardware. With the launch of the Avada 2 they also released a new motion controller. This is now the Motion 3, and they released a new set of goggles. These are the DJI Goggles 3. And we're going to take a closer look at all this individual hardware. Now, when you purchase it, if you haven't purchased a kit yet, there's two different options for you to purchase. Well, technically three. The first is the Fly More Combo, which is basically what you see here in front of me. With it, you get the drone, you get one battery, you get the Motion 3, and you get the Goggles 3. On top of that, you also get an OTG cable. This is for connecting the goggles to your smartphone. And in this video, we're gonna talk about why you would wanna do that. You also get a charging and data cable. Again, this can be for charging or for transferring content or even updating the firmware. On top of that, you also get some spare props and a little Allen key to change them out. Now, the second package is basically identical, except with it, you get everything that we already talked about, but you also get a charging hub and you get two spare batteries. On top of that, you also get a carrying case. Now, the third option will be purchasing just the Avada alone. Now, at the time of recording this video, that's not available yet for purchasing independently, but my sources at DJI said that will be coming about a month after the release. Now, if you haven't purchased it yet, I do highly recommend getting the one with the extra batteries. One battery you'll find is just not enough. You do get a bit of a discount when you purchase it all together as a kit. So it is something I highly recommend if it is in your budget. So moving on here, let's take a closer look at all the equipment and we'll go over all the buttons and controls. So this is the Motion 3. It's DJI's intuitive way of flying these FPV style drones. This is actually the third version, the third iteration of their motion controller. It's a really nice way to fly, especially as a beginner. It's very intuitive. They also released a new controller called the DJI FPV Controller version 3. Now, unfortunately, at the time of filming this video, it's not available yet. This is all pre-release, so it will be available hopefully upon launch. And I'm going to be making a separate video going over it a little bit more in detail once it is available. But as mentioned, as a beginner, this motion controller works quite well. It's very easy to use. If we take a look around it here, you can see we have a trigger button. And this basically controls your speed and direction. By pulling the trigger in, the drone is going to move forward. By pushing it back, the drone is going to move in reverse. When you push in the trigger and you're flying forward, to turn the drone, you're just going to twist your wrist. You don't want to turn it this way. You just want to go from side to side and that's going to make the drone move in that direction. If you twist it to the left, the drone is going to turn left. If you twist it to the right, the drone will turn right. On top of that, to increase the altitude while you're flying, you're going to tip back and to lower the altitude, you're going to tip forward. We also have a joystick on the Motion 3 controller that can control some movements. You can push the joystick up from side to side and the drone is going to move accordingly. Beside that, this big orange button here is our arming button, our takeoff button, and it can also be a landing button. And we are going to take a closer look at how all these buttons function while we're out taking a test flight. So that'll be coming up here in a minute. On the side here, we have a power button. That's how we power on and off the controller. But that's also our bind button if we ever have to rebind the controller back to the drone. To power on the motion controller, it's a double press. So you do a quick press and then a long press. You'll hear that beep, and then the unit's going to power on. To power it off, same thing, quick press, and then a long press. Moving around here, we have our mode button and our return to home button. So while flying, you can go from the normal mode to sport mode if you want a little bit more speed. A long press will initiate a return to home. Beside that, we have a dial, and that can be used for many different things again. Below that, we have a record button. We can stop and start recording. 
At the bottom here, we have a USB-C port for charging and updating firmware. And there's a little opening there that you can attach a wrist strap. One is included in the box. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take a look around the drone here now. The battery is already pre-installed in the drone when you get it. To release the battery, there's two buttons at the side that you're gonna press in and it will pull out. And to reinsert it, you just slide it in and press until you hear that click. On the battery, there's a button. At any time, we can press it, and that's gonna show us how much power is in that battery. Now, when you get it and it's brand new, don't be alarmed if you press that button and nothing lights up. These batteries are shipped in a hibernative state, so in order to take them out of that hibernative state, you're just gonna plug them in and charge them for the first time. But when that battery is installed, that same button also becomes our power button and it works exactly the same way as the controller and most DJI equipment. To power it on and off, it's a quick press and then a long press. You're gonna see the props move there a little bit, and then you're gonna hear that tone signifying that it's powered on. And again, to power it off, it's the same thing. Quick press and then a long press. So moving along here, at the back we have the new sensors. This is something new on the Avada 2. And at the side here, there's a little door that we can open up. There's a spot for the memory card, which we'll take a look at here in a second. And there's also a USB-C port. That USB-C port can be used for charging the battery while it's installed in the drone. It can be used for transferring content and for updating the firmware. And we're gonna get a little bit more into detail about charging and memory here in a second. So let's go ahead here. We're gonna take a look at the new Goggles 3. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice that's different from the previous versions is we now have two cameras here on the front. Those are binocular cameras and it allows you to get a look around you while you have the goggles on. So you no longer have to take the goggles off if you want to get a sense of your surrounding. DJ calls that real view and you can enable it by double pressing the button on the side of the Motion 3 controller or you can double tap on either side of the screen and again that will enable it. Another double tap will disable it. It is a really handy feature. And there are some settings you can adjust in the settings on how that works. You can have it just a flat 2D image, or you can even turn it on to 3D. And the 3D makes it look like VR, virtual reality. It's actually really interesting and it looks really good. Here at the top, we have fold out antennas. You always wanna make sure they're folded out while you're flying. At the bottom here, we have the adjustments for our vision. So if you wear prescription glasses, you can dial it in to your prescription or pretty close anyways. There's digital markers that appear on the screen, letting you know exactly what the strength is you have dialed in. And we can also move the lenses side to side. Beside that, we have a USB-C port. That's how we charge the goggles up. We can also again use that for updating firmware. And then below that, we have our power button. And just like all the other equipment here, it's a quick press and a double press to power it on. Powering it off is the same thing, quick press and then a long press. Moving around here, if we look inside the goggles here, we have a spot for a memory card and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. We have our lenses. You always wanna make sure that these don't point directly into the sun because you can damage the screen inside. And if you wanna get some custom lenses made, if you have a very unique prescription and you find these dials just don't quite work, there are websites that sell custom prescription lenses for this and everything you need is included in the box. Now at the top here, we have two buttons. We have a back button and we have a 5D joystick. So you can use it for inputting settings, changing settings. You can also press down on it to confirm your selection. And while we're talking about changing settings, uh, something I should mention, is this year with the Motion 3, while you have the goggles on and the drone sitting on the ground and you haven't taken off yet, you can actually use your Motion 3 like a pointer. There's a virtual pointer that appears in the goggles and it can make it a little bit more convenient to change settings. And again, we'll take a look at that as we go along. And lastly, with the goggles here, at the back we have a dial. This whole unit here is the battery, but that dial there is how you adjust the fit. Another way to adjust the fit, you're gonna notice that the goggles have a bit of a hinge here. And all that does is it allows you to tighten the goggles a little bit to your face or pull them farther away. So that's gonna be different for everybody. It basically dictates how much pressure is against the face to ensure that you have a good seal because you don't want any light leaking in. 
hinge does not allow the goggles to flip right up. It's mainly just to make sure that they're fitting comfortably. So let's go ahead here and we're going to talk about memory for the goggles and for the drone. Now you do not need to put memory into the goggles in order to use this setup. Basically you're only going to add memory to the goggles if you want to be able to do screen recordings of the flight. Now the high definition video that you're going to be recording with the drone it's going to be stored on the memory card of the drone or the internal memory that's built into it. This will just give you a screen recording with all the telemetry. Some people like that for their own records or if you're making different YouTube videos it's nice to sometimes have all that information. You don't need a very fast memory card or an overly large memory card because it only records at 1080 to the memory card installed in the goggles. Now my favorite brand is SanDisk and when it comes to them I use the Extreme or the Extreme Pro. For these ones here I just happen to have the Extreme Pro so that's what I'm putting into it. But the regular Extremes work just fine. When you go to install them you're going to put the graphic facing down and then just push it in until you hear it click. Now when it comes to the drone here you got to have a really fast card because this does record at 4k. So for it I do recommend the Extreme or the Extreme Pro and when it comes to memory size it's all up to you. Uh, but I do recommend 128 gigabytes or higher. Right now I'm putting in a 256 gigabyte. Just with 4K video, if you put like a 32 gigabyte card in, that can actually fill up very quickly. Even a 64 gigabyte, you might find in a flight session, you might run out of space. And to install it again, you're going to have the graphic facing down. And you're just going to slide it into the memory card slot. And then just push it in until it clicks. So now let's talk about charging the devices. It does come with a charging cable, uh, but one thing you'll notice it does not come with is a charging brick. That is something you will have to provide on your own. Now many of us already have charging bricks from things like tablets and smartphones. If you don't have one and you need to purchase one, DJI does sell multiple ones. They have a 65 watt charger and a 100 watt charger, both available on their website. And I do believe they're on Amazon as well. And there's many other third party ones that are available, like this one from Anchor. It's a nice high wattage charger. We have two USB-C's on it and a USB-A. So this might be a good choice for you as well. There are a couple different ways in which we can charge the drone batteries. As mentioned, we can plug our USB-C cable, once it's plugged into power, directly into the USB-C port. If we take a look at the back here, you're gonna notice that these lights are gonna start to flash. So that signifies that the drone is now charging. So, and if you purchase just the single battery kit, that's how you will charge your batteries. If you've purchased the kit with the charging hub and the spare batteries, you can use this charging hub to charge up all your batteries. Again, you would use that same cable and plug it into the side there. And with it, you can charge just one battery, two batteries, or all three. Now with the charging hub, it's only gonna charge one battery at a time in succession. Now another nice feature of this charging hub is it can be used as a power bank you can see here I've got my smartphone and I'm going to take a USB-C cable, plug it into the USB-C port there at the side into my iPhone. And then we're going to press the power button and you're going to notice there it's going to start charging. There we go there. So that's great if you're out in the field and you've got enough drone power, but uh, you know, your smartphone or an action camera is getting low. You can use some of the power from your batteries to charge up your devices. And lastly, it has another feature called power consolidation. So if you have all your batteries installed in it and say they're all half full, what it's going to do, if you press and hold on the power button, it's going to consolidate all the power from some of the empty ones and try and make one full battery or two full batteries. So again, that can come in very handy in some situations. Now to charge up the motion controller, you would use the same cable and the same charging brick. And all you do is plug it into the bottom there. Then at the top here, you're going to see the lights blinking, signifying it is charging. And the same for the goggles, as mentioned, the battery is in the back here, but to charge it up, we're just gonna plug that same USB cable again into the USB-C port. On the side here is where the progress bar is. You'll see it flashing, signifying it is charging. So we've taken a look at the hardware. We've talked about memory and charging everything up. But before we can take our first flight, we have to activate this equipment. On top of that, there's gonna be some firmware that needs to be installed. It's actually a very simple procedure and there's two different ways in which we can do it. We can use our smartphone and the DJI Fly app that will kind of update everything at once 
or we can plug each individual component into a computer. DJI has software called the Assistant 2 app, the consumer drone version. It can be downloaded from the DJI website if you go to dji.com downloads. With it, you would plug each individual component in one at a time into a USB-C port on a Mac or PC or laptop, and it will prompt you to activate. And from there, you can also update to the latest firmware, which is highly recommended to do. But the other way to do it is using your smartphone. And I'll kind of demonstrate that here quickly for you. Basically, what we're going to have to do first is power everything on and make sure everything is connected together. So we'll just power everything on one at a time. And it doesn't matter in which order you power it on. You'll notice when it connected, these lights turn to a solid green. And this light here on top of the drone blinks slowly green. That way you know everything is connected. And at this point, if you put your goggles on, you should have a visual feed of what the camera sees. So in order to activate all the equipment and update the firmware, we're gonna plug the goggles into our smartphone. And I'm gonna be connecting it to an iPhone here, so I'm gonna be using that OTG cable that came with it. And then here I have a lightning cable that's gonna to connect to the phone. So we'll plug the OTG cable into the bottom of the goggles in the USB-C port, and then we're gonna plug it into the phone. At this point, we're going to launch the DJI Fly app. Now, because I've already been out flying my equipment, it's already been updated and activated. So I'll just show you a screen capture of when I did that. When you plug it in and launch the Fly app, it's going to detect the Avada right away, the Avada 2 right away. At that point, it's going to prompt you to activate the drone. When that's been done, it's going to show you that there is a firmware update available. And from there, you can just click on it and install it. Depending on how big the firmware update is, it could take upwards of 10, 15 minutes. It'll give you a confirmation once it's been completed. So for most people, that's probably the easiest way to do it. So it just really depends on your personal preference. Now, while we're talking about the goggles and having it plugged into our smartphone, it actually has another feature as well. When you have the cable connected to the goggles and you plug it into your smartphone, and launch the DJI Fly app, you can get a preview of the camera right on your phone. So that's great if you're out flying and you want to hand your phone to somebody so they can see what you're filming and see what you're seeing. It can be a fun way for spectators to see exactly what's going on. Just keep in mind what you're seeing on the screen is just for visual purposes. You can't go in and change any settings from within the Fly app. You have to change all the settings within the goggles. Now at this point, we're going to take a look at the telemetry inside the goggles and how to change a few settings. We're not going to go over everything because there is a lot in there. I might make a separate video going over all the settings and what they do. But for now, we're just going to take a look at the basics, things that you need to know in order to take your first flight. Okay, so we are getting ready to go out and take our first flight. I'm going to demonstrate a few things for you. But before we do that, I'm just going to go over a few things here on the interface and in the menu. Now, as mentioned, I'm not going to do a full walkthrough. I'm going to save that for a separate video, uh, but just a couple quick things that you should make note of. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is we have that pointer in the screen because the drone is not up in the air. So you can use it just by using the motion controller. You can move it around and you can select different things just by hitting the trigger button. But uh, let's take a look down here in the bottom left hand corner. This is all our telemetry. So you can see we're in normal mode. That's the default mode when you take off and we can switch it into sport mode when uh, we're ready to fly faster and that will change to an S. Here we have our height and our distance. So those are good things to keep an eye on. We also above the distance, this is our vertical speed and over here, this is our horizontal speed, how high we're going up and down or how fast we're going up and down, I should say. Over on the right hand side, we have the battery percentage of the goggles. We have how many satellites we're connected to. So you want to make sure you have a good amount of satellites before you take off. That way the drone knows which way to come home if you ever get disconnected. Here is our megabits, basically the strength, the signal strength. Now you'll notice that will go up once we take off. Right now it's in a low power mode. And then again here is to do with our strength. We have our RC strength, which is basically the connection to the controller. And then we have our HD strength, which is the connection, the visual feed to the goggles. And then beside that, we have our battery level of the drone itself. You can see we're at 97%. And this will change to a number once we're up in the air, telling us how much time or approximately how much time we have left to fly. At the bottom here, you can see this camera icon that comes up when we hover over it. That is some quick camera settings we can change. At the top, again, we have some quick settings. We can stop and start recording. We can have enhanced display turned on. 
head tracking and uh, we're going to talk about that in a separate video. This icon here enables live view so you can stream wirelessly to a mobile device if you want somebody to get a preview of what you're seeing. And over here we have Easy Acro which allows you to do different tricks with the motion controller. But again we're going to save that for a different video. To get into the bulk of our settings we're going to go to the left hand side there. Click on settings. And again, there's all different things we can change in here. So it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with it first before you go for your first flight. The one you should really pay attention to is the safety tab up here. If there's any problems, it'll be listed there that something might need to be calibrated. You can see for mine, everything says normal. Here we have our max flight altitude. So you can set that to whatever you feel comfortable. Most countries, the max legal height is 400 feet. You can set your distance. Right now I have mine set to no limit but if you don't feel comfortable flying out say more than 500 meters you can set that appropriately and your return to home altitude this one can be important you want to set that higher than the tallest obstacle now sometimes that's not realistic because you might be flying around buildings that are much higher than the legal max altitude uh, but you know around trees and different things like that and other than that we have camera settings, control settings, and like I said, it's a good idea to go through this and uh, familiarize yourself with some of the settings. But there's nothing we really need to do right off the start for your first flight. So with that said, let's uh, go for a quick flight and I'll show you how to use the motion controller. Okay, so you can see we're all set up here. We have the drone out in front of us, everything's powered on, and uh, we're gonna go for a quick flight. Now, in order to take off, what we're gonna do is double press on that red button there. That's gonna arm the drone, so we'll quick double press. So you can hear that the drone has started there, but it's not taking off yet. So in order to take off, we're gonna press and hold that same button. And there we go there. You can see the drone is gonna go up and hover. And because it's connected to GPS, it's just gonna stick right there. It's not gonna move it's not going to drift around. Now, and you'll notice too, I'm moving the motion controller and nothing is happening uh, except the camera. You can see the camera is moving up and down, uh, but the drone isn't moving at all. The motion controller has a two position trigger. So if you push the trigger in just a little bit till you feel it click, that allows the drone to spin. Now that's all it's going to do. It's not going to go forward or reverse. It just allows you to position it to the angle that you want. So that can be very useful if you get into a tight situation, you're in around some trees, that will allow you to position yourself to get out safely. In order to move forward, we're gonna press the trigger button into the second position. And you can see there, the farther in I push the trigger, the faster it will start to fly. Now myself, when I take off, I don't like to have my goggles on. I like to get the drone up and hovering, get myself situated, and then I'll put the goggles on. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna put the goggles on and uh, we'll go for a quick flight. And just remember, if you start to panic, just let go of everything and the drone is gonna stop and hover. That allows you to regain your composure and figure out your next move. Now also, before you go for your first flight, it's a good idea to do some research of the rules and regulations of the country in which you live. Every country is a little bit different with the regulations. And it's a good idea to find a nice open field. You can see I have a lot of stuff around me right now. So this probably isn't an ideal place to go for your first flight until you get a little bit more comfortable with the equipment. So let's go ahead here. I'm gonna start a recording. And there we go there. So we're just gonna press the controller a little bit forward and you can see we're moving slowly. If I let go of the trigger, the drone is just gonna stop as mentioned. And even if I move the controller around, nothing is happening except the camera moves up and down. In order to spin around, I need to press the trigger in a little bit to that first stop. And then press the trigger in further and that will get the drone moving again. And you can see that circle on the screen. Where you point that is where the drone is gonna go. Now, we're just going slow here, so there's not a lot of movement. So just take your time at first, just go slow, get a feel for the drone and how it moves. And again, we're in normal mode right now. 
And uh, for your first flight, that's definitely what I would leave it in until you get comfortable. And if you want to go into sport mode, you just press the mode button there. You can see that N turn to an S down the bottom left hand corner. And uh, we'll put it back in normal mode right now. So as mentioned, I have the trigger just pushed to that first stop. So that way I can just spin the drone around without worrying about it moving forward. And uh, right now in camera settings, I have the uh, horizon leveling enabled. So that's going to keep the horizon perfectly level and uh, make it look like a traditional drone. So it's all what you like to film in. That's all personal preference. Uh, we're going to make another video about that. Now the video f you see in the goggles is going to be a little bit shaky. And that's actually what you're seeing right now because I'm just doing a screen recording. The video, the high definition video that's saved to the drone is going to be stabilized as long as you have that turned on in the settings, which is by default. But just in the goggles, it's going to look like it's all over the place, especially if it's a windy day and you're a little bit shaky. But all that will be smoothed out on the final video that gets saved to the memory card in the drone. And uh, some people, when they're flying an FPV like this for the first time, uh, they like to sit down because, you know, there can be some... Uh, vertigo or nauseousness associated with it until you get used to it. I used to have to sit down all the time to fly but now I'm, uh, I'm used to it so I don't have to. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I've seen people tip right over so... Yeah so just go slow, get a feel for the drone and how it moves. I'm just going to show you here quickly, just for some of the movements. So the drone's out in front of me right now. And you want to remember to turn to the drone, you want to twist from side to side. You don't want to do this. Go from side to side. On top of that, you can also do some fine movements with that joystick. For example, we can press up and the drone's going to rise. We can press down and the drone is going to lower. We can also press from side to side and the drone is going to move accordingly. So that can be very handy in some situations as well. Here is our mode button. As we've talked about, that's how we can switch into sport mode. But that's also your return to home. If we press and hold that button, the mode button there, the drone is going to come back and try and land pretty well where it took off from. So that's great. If you happen to get disconnected, it will automatically come home to you. So not any worries there. Or if you lose your orientation, you're not quite sure where you are, then uh, you can press the return to home button. But just be very cautious, that should only be used if necessary, just because this drone does not really have any obstacle avoidance per se. So you do risk it colliding with something, especially if you're in a wooded area like this and a return to home is triggered, it could end up flying right into a tree. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but because it is ducted, if this drone does happen to crash, uh, chances are it is going to survive. Uh, my other, my original Avada, I've crashed probably a hundred times and I've never done any damage to it. So yeah, at this point, it's just a matter of getting out and flying, getting used to the controller. Uh, some people may opt to buy the traditional controller. That's going to be like a, an option that you can purchase. I don't have it yet, uh, but soon as it is available, I will be purchasing one and I'll be making another video about it as well. Now I'm just going to show you quickly here how to land it when you're ready to land. There's a couple different ways you, you can do it, but I'll show you the easiest. So I'm just going to go and fly above my landing pad here. So you can see there, the drone is hovering pretty well right above it. And now all I'm going to do is pull down on the joystick. And you can see that the drone just goes ahead and lands. Now, as mentioned, to change the settings and that cursor that we had in there, that virtual cursor, I was using the Motion 3. So while the drone's not up in the air, you can use the controller and that's going to move that virtual cursor around. To select an item, you just press in on the trigger. To go back, you press the other way. Or, like I mentioned, you can just click on a blank area of the screen and that will go to the previous menu. Now, the other way to change all your settings, if you don't like using the virtual cursor, 
is you can use this 5D button here and uh, you know to access the settings you're going to pull to the right. That's going to bring up the main settings. To get to those quick settings from the top you just pull down and to get to the quick camera settings at the bottom you just push up and then you can navigate through the menu just by moving that, uh, that joystick there. Pressing on the joystick will select an item and then when you need to back out you press the back button. Now, one last thing here before I go, I just want to talk about recording and automatic recording with the Avada. There's a couple different ways in which we can capture. In the settings, you can have it set that as soon as the drone takes off, it's going to automatically start recording. And you can set that in the settings. And there's also a setting that you can have it record automatically to the drone, to the drone's memory card, the high definition video. But you can also do a screen recording. And that'll happen as soon as you take off. If you prefer to do recording manually, you want to actually tell it when to record because sometimes you might just be flying for fun. You don't really want to capture footage. You would set that again in the settings and then when you're ready to record, all you do is hit the record button here at the side of the Motion 3 or you can start recording in settings in the goggles. To do so, we would access the top menu and that first icon there is record. You would just enable that and then the whole system will start recording. Well folks, that's basically it. That is my beginner's guide for the new DJI Avada 2. If this is a drone you're interested in, perhaps you've just purchased it or you are thinking of purchasing it, consider subscribing to my channel as we will be having all different tutorials and demonstrations about this drone over the coming weeks and months. We'll dive into some more advanced tutorials. I'll have a few tips and tricks videos and a couple other tutorials that you might find beneficial as a new pilot. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.